You ready to rock and roll? All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another night of Salt and uh, <laughs> with Salt and Light Covenant Church Bible study. I'm your pastor, Pastor Omar Ellison, and we are here. Um, and we'd like to welcome you all as you come in, as you gather your Bibles, your notes, tablets, phones, or whatever it is you're going to use to follow along with us in the Word. Amen. We welcome you here. Um, as you gather those things, let's pray real quick, clear our hearts and minds. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We magnify you for another opportunity and time to be with you. Amen. To sit at your feet and to hear your word. We believe your word is going to edify us, uplift us, <coughs> excuse me, and break revelation like never before. Father, we thank you for another time. We thank you for your love. We thank you for keeping us up until this point. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right. Hallelujah. All right. If you would, when you um as you gather your Bibles, turn with me to Psalms 143. Psalms 143. And when you get there, we're going to skip down to the tenth verse. Is this Psalms? That's what I gave you, right? <laughs> Amen. Okay, we there? 143, 10th verse. Psalms 143 and 10. Okay, it reads, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of righteousness. Look at this. You have to be taught to do the will. And he's saying, look, the, the David, the psalmist is saying, teach me to do your will. Teach me to do what you want me to do. Well, how do we know the will of the Father? You always know the will of the Father by his word. If you want to know the will, find out what the word says, and then you'll know the will of the Father. And he's saying, look, Teach me thy will. Or in other words, help me to abide and establish myself in your word. Thou art my God. Look at it. That's personal. Thou art my God. In, in other words, he's, he's my God. He's my father. Another, another way you can look at it, he's my source. He's saying, look, he is my God. He is my source. Look at the next piece. The spirit, thy spirit is good. The spirit is good. How can you say the spirit is good? Because the spirit comes from him. He is the source. Everything that comes from him is good. The Holy Ghost is a part of him. He's saying, look, your spirit is good. The spirit is what you need to walk this thing we call life out. Watch this. It's going to lead me. Look what the spirit job is to, to, to do. It's to lead me into the land of uprightness. It's going to lead you into the land of uprightness. Because when you first come in, it's a process. Because <laughs> you still got... Some stuff to clear out. And it's not, let me correct that. It's not you that have to clear it out. It's still some things that the Father has to wash you up from. So when you first come in, you still got a lot of the, the worldly residue, worldly thinking, worldly way attached to you. Right? And it's the Holy Ghost's job to lead you up out of that into the land of the upright. Or in other words, having the, the right mind of understanding that you and him are connected now. So in him leading you into the land of righteousness, it's going to lead you into your character changing. It's going to lead you into your speech changing. It's going to lead you into your walk changing. It's going to lead you into your decisions changing. It's going to lead you into you becoming a new man, one that you didn't know because that old man has passed away. This doesn't make sense to y'all, right? But this has to be taught. He said, look, teach me. That's what it started off saying, right? Teach me. To do your will. Teach me to do your will. Now, to be taught something means you have to be yielded enough to hear what the teacher is saying. 
So you yourself, individually, including myself as a pastor, but I have to yield myself to what his word is saying. And as I yield myself according to what his word is saying, then his word becomes my teacher. Are y'all with me on this? It's his word that teaches us. Watch this now. And as it teaches me, watch this, to do thy will. And then he said, look, in your teaching, I'm going to recognize that you are mine. You're my father. Your spirit is good. That spirit that you gave me is good. And it's going to lead me to do the right thing without me trying to do it. I'm just going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's why you cannot walk this walk out apart from the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. It's so important. And everybody can have them. Every believer should want him. Should want him to come in. If you're a believer and, and you have believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, then, he, then you are open. You are open um, temple for the Holy Ghost to come and reside in you. Are y'all with me on this? And with that comes everything else. Understanding, revelation, clarity comes by way of the Holy Ghost. Make sense? Amen. All right. So that's Psalms 143 and 10. Anybody want to touch on that one while we're there? Psalms 143 and 10. If not, we're going to go to John 14. John 14. John, the 14th chapter, when you get there, skip down with me to the 13th verse. John, the 14th chapter, and then skip down with me to the 13th verse, because I really want to um, touch on this, and I'm going to show you some things um, according to this, this is word. All right, we there, John, the 14th chapter? When you there, skip down with me to the 13th verse. We there? All right, watch this. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Watch this. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. I'm going to read it again. Whatsoever you shall or will ask, but now look how you ask, in my name, that name being Jesus Christ, okay? So whatever you ask in his name, this is the promise. I'll do it for you. Y'all seeing this, okay? So you say, you, uh, but now to, to be able to receive this promise, you have to understand what the name encumbers, what the name stands for, the price that that name paid for. The price that was that was that was placed upon our Lord and Savior, and the Bible said after he he obeyed until the death of the cross, he was highly exalted, and given a name above every name, that name being Jesus. Now watch in that in that name is everything that Jesus stood for. In that name is everything that Jesus did. Now watch this, Jesus. The Father and the Holy Ghost are one. That name covers all the bases. Are y'all with me on this? So when I say that name, that's like me saying the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. They're all in one. But he put everything in, the, in, in, in that name and then he gave us the name. Because up until this point, they had to ask nothing in the name because he was with them. So they didn't have to ask anything. But see, he's about to get ready to go, to go get on the cross. He said, I'm about to leave you. It's a must that I leave. He's letting them know, though. But look, I'm, when I leave you and when I, when I depart, I'm leaving you something. First, I'm going to send you someone so you won't be alone. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But then I'm also going to give you a name, a name above every name. This name is going to break and deal. Everything you need to happen is going to come through my name. And if you understand and find out and get established in the power that's in the name, he said, whatever you ask in this name, I'll do. He didn't say I might do. He didn't say I'll think about it because, you know, you got to get some stuff straight. Come on now. He, he didn't, he, we didn't read that, did he? 
Because if he wanted to say that, he would have put that in there, wouldn't he? It would have read something like this. Are we reading what? 13? Look at this. He said, look, and whoever, he said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, if you get it right, I'll do it. If it's under the blood, I'll do it. If your life is straight, if you understand some things, because the Holy Ghost could have put that in there. But he said, look, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. That's it. Watch this. That, look why he's going to do it. That the Father may be glory. See how the always, he's always pointing us back to the Father. That the Father may be glorified. Because when he was here, he did nothing apart from the Father. And he said, look, how I was with the Father, now you're with me. So how he was with the Father, we are with Jesus. So that's why everything that we have that we deal with is connected, goes through Jesus. Because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He's the door. He's the bread. He's my way maker. He's my everlasting king. He's the prince of peace. He's the one. He's all of those things now. It's all in the embodiment of Jesus. Are y'all with me on this? And when you understand the power that's in that name, things that break in that name, he said, I'll do anything you ask me to do for you. Now, it ain't just anything. Because, see, sometimes people will hear that and say, well, he said he'll do anything. And I always wanted a million dollars. Well, your word says, he didn't say million dollars, million, millionaires in this book. Now, he's, he's about prosperity. And and if and if it's in, if it's in your if it's on your blueprint, he's about millionaires as, as well. Now, don't get me wrong; it's not that you can't be a millionaire. It's not what you go after, though. Are you with me on this? If it's on my blueprint, millionaire for me, Father. If it's not on my blueprint, keep it, because I only want what you have on my blueprint. See, I might not have millionaire on my blueprint, but Brother George may have it on his. Hallelujah. You receive that, don't you? I receive that, Pastor, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? So I want, I want what's mine, and whatever's mine is going to be good. It's, it's, fit, it's tailored just for my life. Same thing for Brother George. Whatever's his is his. It's fit and it's tailored just for, for his life. Brother George saying, send the million dollars right now in Jesus. Are y'all with me on this? This makes sense? But you do it all in the name it's in that name it's in that name it's in that name it's power in that name do y'all see how this works so watch this real quick whatsoever he said look whatever he said whatever you shall ask in my name you got to do it in his name that will i do that the father it's all it's all uh contingent back to the father being what glorified being lifted up being magnified when you ask in that name y'all with me on this that makes sense okay anybody want to touch on that one while we there because we're about to go a little deeper. Y'all ready? All right, go with me to Acts. Go with me to Acts. All right. When y'all get to Acts, skip down with me to the sixth verse. I mean, six. We're going to Acts 3. And then when you get there, get down with me to the sixth verse. Acts 3, and then skip down with me to the 6th verse. So he said, look, you're asking my name, right? So that means he's gifted us what? His name. And everything we need is in the name. Right? So whenever, whatever, whatever I make a demand for, because, you know, we don't ask like, ask like we don't have it. We, when we ask, we ask as in though we're making a demand on that we already know is mine. Right? Okay, so now watch this. Now, y'all there with me in the 6th verse. Let's watch this now. Okay, we are real familiar with this story. We all know this story, right? All right, sixth verse. Look what it says. There the gate beautiful. The lame man is sitting there. Sixth verse says, then Peter said, watch this now. Peter said this. This cut the ear off Peter now. But this is a different Peter. Are y'all with me on this? This is a different Peter. This cut the ear off Peter, didn't have the Holy Ghost. This Peter has the Holy Ghost. This is a different Peter. See, see, Pastor Omar is a different Omar than the Omar of old times. See, the Omar that didn't have the Holy Ghost was cut, cutting the ears off. Are y'all with me on this? See, this Omar's got the Holy Ghost. He know how to put his stuff up. He know how to keep his mouth closed now because the Holy Ghost has been teaching me some things. 
Are y'all with me on this? So this is a different Peter. This is a Peter with the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Peter says to the man, six verse, we there? Silver and gold, I don't have any. Or I have none. Have I none? He said, but watch this. But such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. He said, I don't have money. Okay? But what I do have, what, which means he knew he had something. Oh, y'all got to get this right here. He knew he had something. He said, silver and gold, I don't have that now because I know that's what you're looking for. But I do have something that's better than silver and gold. Oh, y'all got to catch this. See, what I have is better than money. What I have is better than your resources. What I have is better than somebody having your back. What I have, oh, good God of money, is way better. Look what he said. He said, look, he said, look, I don't have, he said, I have none, but that such I have, I'm going to give it to you in the name of what? Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do what? Rise up and walk. Do y'all see this? Now catch this. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Do you see when he mentioned the name? Y'all got to catch this. Because this was brought to my attention about a, a few, about a week ago. And ever since I've changed this around, I've been seeing results. Do you see where he placed the name? Now, let me tell you before I caught what I caught, this is how I would have said it. I would have said, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. How many of us pray like that? Father, this, and I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Dusk. I call for that door open in Jesus' name. I, 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 I looking for the thank you for the turnaround in Jesus' name. Look where I'm putting it. At the end. Uh oh, y'all gotta catch this now. Now this how y'all are about sata. Now this will change your life if y'all get this right here. He put it at the front. And, and, and John, he said, Look, whatever you ask in my name. Oh gosh, I gotta get this. You got to ask it, but it's got to be in my name, which means I'm first. Y'all got to catch this now. I got to be first when you ask. So it ain't door open in Jesus' name. Breakthrough come in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, money in Jesus. No, 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 no. In Jesus' name, door open. In Jesus' name, healing break forth. In Jesus' name, provision be made. Oh, y'all getting this. See, he said what? He said, look, I don't have silver and gold, but that that I do have, I'm going to give it to you. In Jesus' name, rise up and walk. And he said it at the very jump. And when I caught this understanding, I said, oh, my God. And I flipped my stuff around. I had to go back and recant some stuff. Because all my life, I've been putting them at the back. And look, because I didn't know he's so good, he let stuff still break. Oh, stuff still came together for me. Prayers were still answered. He said, but I know there's a day he's going to get it. He's going to see some things. He's going to change that thing around, and he's going to do it the right way. He said, look, my son say, whatever you ask in my name. So in Jesus' name. Are y'all with me on this? This going to flip your prayers around. He said, I'm first. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. So he said, look, when you come talking to me, come in that name. He said, in Jesus' name, rise up. In Jesus' name, heal and break forth. In Jesus' name, back, stop hurting. In Jesus' name, knees stop aching. In Jesus' name, organs get right. In Jesus' name, mind get straight. In Jesus' name, doors open right now. In Jesus' name, paperwork move now. In Jesus' name, disease and sickness leave now. Mm. You got to do it in that name. And when you come in that name, knowing the, the power in that name, Demons bow down. Because he said every knee will bow. 
but they're only authorized to bow to that name. And then he gifted us the name. He said, look, up until this point, oh, God, I got to go back and read John. We're going to touch on this even further. Hallelujah. Y'all probably already probably know where we're going to go starting off in the beginning of the year. He said, up until this point, you haven't asked anything in my name. You hadn't, you didn't no need to. I was here. He said, but now, ask in my name. And whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Didn't he tell us that in John? And then we see Peter doing just that. And did Peter get any results? Now watch this. Now this is a bonus scripture. I, I came across this in my study. And skip down with me to the 16th verse. Now this ain't even on your list. See, I'm going to throw this in. This bonus right here. Go to the 16th verse of that same chapter. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all there? Watch this. And his name. Oh God. Through what? Faith. Through what? Faith. Through what? Faith, faith in what? Oh, y'all got to get it now. See that? See, we just got through talking about faith, didn't we? And we say everything you do, you got to do it in faith. Well, look here. Even when you speak that name, it's, it's faith in that name. What do you mean faith in that name? It means that I, I, I understand and I'm establishing and I believe without any evidence or any proof of ever seeing it with my own eyes that he did what the Bible says he did. He healed the lame. He raised the dead. He preached sermons. I didn't see any of it, but I believe he did it. And he said, because I have faith in that name. Now watch this. He said, look, in that name, through faith in that name, hath this man, hath this made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He said, the faith that was by him, who was that him? Jesus. Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of the Father, high and lifted up, far, far, far above is what Ephesians tells me. And he said, look, I've, I've, I've gifted you my name now. And you go by faith in my name. And when you speak that name by faith, whatever you ask for, I'll do it for you. As long as it's in line with my word. Well, it's, in, it's healing in line with his word. Hallelujah. That's why that brother jumped up and went to leaping and walking and praising the Lord. Because healing is a part of the uh, package deal. Is provision part of the package deal? Redemption part of the package deal? Salvation part of the package deal? Is joy part of the package deal? Come on, saints. Oh, that's part of the pack. That's a part of the stimulus package. That's a benefit. Those are benefits of understanding what that name represents. And as we understand it even the more, we'll be able to see things manifest in the, even the greater. But it's in the name. Y'all with me on that? Let me show it to you again. Turn with me to Acts. We're still in Acts. Turn with me over to the 16th chapter. Watch this. Watch this. 16th chapter. Skip down with me to the 18th verse. Y'all there? We're still in Acts. One more place. I'm going to show you this. 16, 18. All right. The 18th verse of the 16th chapter of Acts. And it says, and this did she many days. We're talking about the young lady, the damsel. Uh, that was uh, uh, the sorcerer. That was that was um, uh, bringing uh, soothsaying for the for the masses, bringing much gain. The Bible talks about. But watch this. And she did this many days, following behind Paul, talking about these men are the ones that have come the, the way of salvation. But Paul, watch this, being grieved, turned, watch this, and said to the to the what? Stop right there. Look who Paul talked to. And you want to talk to the boss. You want you think it's the spouse. You want to talk to your spouse. You think it's the kids, don't you? You want to talk to the kids, don't you? Sit down. Let me talk to you. Uh-uh. The Bible says Paul said that they say for many days she did this. And when Paul turned to address the situation, look who Paul spoke to. The Bible say Paul turned <laughs> and said to the what? The spirit. He talked to the root of the matter. What she was doing was just a manifestation of what the spirit was actually doing. So it's not her because we battle not with flesh and blood. We love them with their crazy self, but we deal with the spirit. Are y'all with me on this? See, the enemy wants you looking at them. And they always got something to say. And they always doing this. And they always, and they always, and they always. And he wants you looking at them because if he can get you caught off with flesh and blood, he got you. 
But the Bible says Paul looked past the flesh and spoke to the spirit. Let's see what he said. Paul turned and, sp and spoke to the spirit. Watch this. <laughs> I command thee. Uh-oh. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out that same hour. But look how he said it. Because how would we have said that? We would have said spirit and the, spirit, the, the devil. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. We bind that up in Jesus' name. Come out of her in Jesus' name. But that's not what Paul said. Oh, y'all got to get this. Paul said it like this. He said, I command thee, which means that's authority. Because he's talking to the spirit and he know that he has authority over spirits. Guess who else has authority over spirits? Y'all do. And it's about time for us to start taking authority over these spirits. See, y'all looking at the supervisor. Y'all looking at your spouses. Y'all looking at the family members. See, y'all looking at flesh. It's a spirit. We are in spiritual warfare. It's not the person. Take your eyes off the people and deal with the spirit. Look what he said. He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ. He put the name first. Then he, then, he made, then he told him what to do. Come out of her. He said, in Jesus' name, come out. Be gone. And the Bible says, and he, talking about the spirit, came out of her the same hour. That, spirit, that means the spirit knew it had to get to going. It couldn't linger. It had to move. Because he came in the authority of the name. Are y'all with me on this? And that same authority, that same power, the Father has gifted to every believer. So don't get so caught up in situations. Recognize it for what it is. Recognize the spirit and deal with the spirit. Deal with the spirit. It's not the person. I shared this story before. The, 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 the lady was talking about her husband, and he was, he was an alcoholic, and he was, she was coming home, and he was drunk all the time. And I said, you fussing at him too, honey. She said, that's right. I showed him. I said, you wrong. Because what she, what she was dealing with, him. It's not him. It's a spirit of alcoholism. She need to deal with the spirit, and she need to love him. Y'all see how it works? So I said, when he come in, start talking to the spirit. Start dealing with the spirit. Command that spirit in Jesus' name to get up out of your household. Command that spirit in Jesus' name to stop suggesting and bring a suggestion to your husband. Command that spirit in Jesus' name to loose your husband. And I say, you stay right there and then watch what happened. Because you got to deal with the spirit. But you do it in Jesus' name. Not at the, not at the end. Right at the top. Because he said, you ask anything in my name. So it's in my name you ask. So in Jesus' name, I thank you right now for the paperwork coming together. In Jesus' name, I thank you right now for my healing. In Jesus' name, I thank you. In Jesus' name, door open. In Jesus' name, touch my family member. In Jesus' name, stop the achiness right now. Do y'all see how this works? Let me tell y'all something. And I've experienced some things. I got testimonies. I just started this probably about a week ago. I already got testimonies that I can share with y'all right now of things that have manifested when I made the switch. I got a testimony so powerful. The young lady I prayed with, she called me crying. I thought something had happened. All I could hear is just crying and she was trying to talk. I said, baby, you got to calm down. You got to calm down. What happened? Is everything okay? And she just went to speaking in tongue. She said, it broke. It happened. You pray. I said, all the glory goes to him. All the glory goes to him. He said, look, ask him my name, and I'm going to do it. So what? So the father, the father, the father, the father can be glorified. 
So when the things break, guess who gets the glory? It's the Father. The Father gets the glory. The Father is glorified. It's the Father. It go back to the Father. Because it's because of the Father that we have this authority. It's because of the Father that I can speak things and it happened. It's because of him and what he did and him sending his only begotten son that we able to have this ability down here on this earth. Are y'all with me on this? This makes sense. But we know it by what? In the name. In the name of Jesus. It's power in the name. It's deliverance in the name. It's turnaround in the name. Make sense? Y'all see the examples? Amen. That's Acts 16 and 18. Amen. Anybody don't touch on that one while we there? All right. Romans. Romans 8. Romans 8, and we're going to go to second verse. Romans 8, second verse. Romans chapter 8, and we're going to go to the second verse when you get there. All right, we there? Now watch this one. It reads, for the law. <laughs> For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Watch this. What it, what it freed us from, from the law of sin and death. So just like we have laws here, there are laws in the spirit too. And the Bible said there's a law of the spirit of life. But this law is established. Look who is established in in Christ Jesus. Watch this. And because we're in him, half. Now, that's half is, y'all, English people, half is past tense. Y'all with me on that, right? That's past tense. That means it's already done. Look, look, at, look what he has already done for you. Made me free. So you are already free. Well, you don't understand. I'm still struggling with some stuff. No, you don't understand how free you are. The more you believe you're free, the freer you are. The Bible said it like this. He said, who the son has set free is free indeed. And he ain't trying to hear about your vices and where you're still making mistakes. He needs you to start focusing on the fact that you're free. And the more you focus on the fact that you're free, the freer you are. He said, you will know the truth and the truth, the truth will make you free. The more truth you know, the more freer you are. So if you're not free in some areas, it just means you just need to know a little more truth. And as you know more truth, the more freer you are. If, you, if, it's, if that's the case, then that means we really ain't got to do all that praying for you then, really, huh? It's just more truth you need to know. <clears throat> because you know more truth, the more freer you are. And look what he freed us from. He freed you from the law. There was a law. Look at this law. The law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. What do you mean the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death is a, is a law and establishments on the ordinance of you doing it. That's all he's talking about. He has freed us now. Because of Jesus Christ, we are, we, have, we are under the law of the spirit. The law of what? Believing in what he did for us. He's already manifested for us. He already walked it out for us. That is our new law. That's our new covenant now. And it has freed us from the old covenant, which was you do, you do, you do, you do. You have to do it. You got to get right. You got to make the change. You got to do it. You got to, you better do it. You better do it. If you don't do it, God can't move. <coughs> and he has freed us from that. Does this make sense to you? And he's saying now because of what Jesus Christ has done, we are in him now. We are embodied in him now. And because we are in him now, we are free from, we do, we rest in what he did. Because he did it. Everything you need, he did it already. So you believe what he did and rest in what he did and you have access to everything that he has, which is everything. He has everything. Whatever it is you need, he has it already. So you rest in him and stop working to make the change yourself. Are y'all with me on this? Because see, religion tells you what? You got to do it. And religion is anti-Christ because he's already done it. If you hear ministers that preach on you changing, that's anti what Christ did. Christ did it already. If you, you, you hear ministers talking about you need to get it right because you need to be holy because he is holy. I am holy because he's holy. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? 
But we grew up saying, well, you got to get that right because, you know, holiness is right. And you're right. It is right. It is. I'm with holiness. But I am holy. I'm holy right now. How you holy? Because he's holy. I'm righteous right now because he's righteous. I'm free right now because he's free. I'm healed right now because he paid for it. I'm sin free right now because he was. Oh, God, is this making sense? Is this clicking? And this is what you got to get rooted in now. Because all the hell and the world going to try to knock you out of that. From being rooted in what you already have because he has it. You don't have to work. The only thing you got the work to do is the work to believe. Make sense? So we are free. Say thank you for your freedom. And we are free from the law of sin and death. And we are now uh, bound by the law of the spirit of life, which is, which is in who? Christ Jesus. Y'all agree with that? Y'all believe that? Amen. You can have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody want to touch on that one while we're there? All right. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. When you get that 3 and 18, go to the 18th verse for me. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. When you get there, uh, skip down to the 18th verse. We there? Watch this. But we all, how many? All of us. All who? All those that believe. Watch this. With open face. Watch this. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by, watch this, the spirit of the Lord. He says, so, but we all, all of us, all believers with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory, beholding his glory. Hold on, what are, you, what are you talking about, beholding his glory? How do I behold his glory in his word? Seeing what he did for us in his word. We behold his glory. The Bible says that Jesus was full of glory and truth. The brightness of his glory was Jesus. We see the son that he sent. We behold his glory. Watch this. In our change. How am I changed? By being in his word. That's why I say his word will effortlessly change you without you trying to change. It's his word that brings about the change. That's why you get in his word and you let that word change you and that word will change you without you trying to change. And the next thing you know, you look up and you just don't do that anymore. You just don't go there anymore. You just don't act like that anymore. You just don't think like that anymore. You just change right there just without you having and trying to change. His word has just changed me. And he said, look, he's going to change you into the same image. The same image that you give yourself to. You give yourself to his word. He said he gonna, you're going to change into the very thing that you behold and that you're looking at on a regular, consistent basis. I'm going to change you into that. The same image from glory to glory, from experience from experience, from manifestation to manifestation. You're going to change. You're going to look more and more like me. Watch this. And even... As by the Spirit, with the Spirit. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by His Spirit. It's His Spirit that's going to help and guide you to do this. So then what's my job? We got to believe. What do I believe? I got to believe His Word. How do I believe His Word more? Stay in it. Sup in it. Sit in it. Don't seem like nothing changing. Keep reading. Keep planting. Keep sowing. I've been doing this for a year. It's still, I'm still dealing with stuff. Keep planting. Keep sowing. Keep walking. Keep sowing. Nothing ain't changed. I've been doing this God stuff. I don't know if this stuff works. I still been. Keep planting. Keep walking. Harvest coming. Trust me. It's impossible to plant spiritual seeds and not receive a spiritual harvest. 
You are not going to take the time out and get in his word to get to know him more and he not manifest himself to you in this lifetime. It's impossible. Just keep reading. I told y'all before, it took me a while for some things to really start breaking in this word. Them first couple of years I was reading this Bible, I ain't understand this stuff. And Lord, I thank God that y'all was patient with me because half of that stuff I was preaching was wrong, but I was, I was, I was trying to get it. I was, I was, yeah, I was there. I was going for it now. And my heart was pure. Hallelujah. But I had to come back and correct some things, and I did. Hallelujah. But it took a little time for me to, for this thing to start clicking. But once it started clicking, oh, the train was moving then. Good God Almighty. Now that the train is moving, oh, we ain't stopping, baby. We're going to ride this all the way to eternity, baby. You hear what I'm saying? And this train is getting faster. It ain't slowing down. Not one bit. You hear me? Oh, we're going to keep riding this train all the way out. Are y'all with me on this? Oh, we on the right track now. Hallelujah. When I first started out, they had to have a little patience with me. All of my pillars over there had patience with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at my pillar. But look, as it, when we finally start clicking, oh, when it started clicking, we started really seeing some things, didn't we? Stuff started happening. Things started changing. Stuff started manifesting in their life a little differently. People started coming. Oh, Hallelujah. That's when I said, okay, we didn't tap into something. I think we're on the right track now. Hallelujah. But he said, look, he said that, so he says, by way of the spirit, and he said, the very thing you giving yourself to, you're going to start changing into it without you trying to do it. So he said, you got to behold now. Behold. Behold as in the glass. This is your glass. This is your mirror. This is what you behold, and this is you. You, you, you seeing yourself because this is how he sees you. So you got to know how he sees you. Beyond your mistakes, beyond where you're missing it, beyond your vices. He says, set your things on things above. Your weaknesses are not above. So keep your mind on things above. How do I do that? I stay in his word. I keep reading about how, how I'm victorious. I keep reading how he sees me as an overcomer. I keep reading about the power that he has gifted me. I keep reading about the power that we have inherited. I keep reading about how he sees me and what he thinks about me. He said, the thoughts that I have to, about you, I know my thoughts, and my thoughts are to do you good. And I just stay in this Bible, and I just keep reading, keep reading, because he said, I'm going to do you good, but you got to just keep reading, keep walking with me. Just keep drawing nigh to me. And you draw nigh to me, I'm going to draw nigh to you. You. And I'm going to show you about yourself and I'm going to tell you about who you are and I'm going to show you about your mistakes and I'm going to let you know why you did what you did and we're going to get that straight and I'm going to clean you up. How you going to clean me up, Father? Oh, I'm going to clean you up by my word. My word is a water. My word will wash you. My word is going to clean you up. Oh, you was red, but I'm going to wash you white as snow. <laughs> Do y'all see how this works? Hallelujah. Next thing you know, you look up and you're like, who is this? Who? <laughs> Hallelujah. This person looked good. Because you didn't change into the very image of who you hung with. Keep hanging with them. I don't care about where you're missing it. Keep hanging with them. Keep walking with them. I don't care about where you're dropping it. Keep walking. You fumble the ball, pick it up. Fall on it. You're going to still have the ball. Hallelujah. They fumble it. Fall on it. What they do when they fumble the ball in football? They fall on that ball, don't they? Hallelujah, just fall on the ball. You still got it. You still got one more possession. Come on, let's go. You got the father on your side. All he need is one second. One second, and he can throw a touchdown in one second, can't he? The score is tied. You got one second on the clock. You just fumble the ball on the third down, fall on the ball, and put the ball in his hands. Touchdown. We win. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? Come on, stop looking at where you're missing it. Stop looking at your weaknesses. Stop looking at where you're failing. And keep your eyes on him. And the very places where you're weak and the very places where you're failing, all of that will eventually fall off from you. Why? Because you are, you're doing what his word told you to do. Attend to my word. Set your affections on things. Not things. What's in this earth? Your weaknesses. Your past. Where you messed up. He said, look, I don't even want you thinking about that. I just messed up before.